Um, <laughs> welcome everyone to another episode of my Artist Spotlight series. We have the beautiful and the Gittens here and I'm so excited to get to know you a little bit more. Um, I've been following you, not like a bad, not like a stalker, but, <laughs> but for a very long time, I think two years, maybe three. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. <laughs> Puppy might have to go down soon. <laughs> Who have you got there, Amber? Uh, this is Willow. Um, yeah, he just, he's a bit, he's not camera shy. As soon as there's a camera, he's there. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, so sweet. Hi, Willow. Oh. <laughs> maybe um yeah no thank you for having me uh this is this is amazing yeah I'm, I'm i'm very excited this is my first podcast so yeah it's a big it's one for me exciting so um i am wondering if maybe you want to tell some of our viewers a little bit about you and your art because i know where are you based you're rural i think Yes, I am. I'm in Mount Gambia, um, South Australia. So it's right down the bottom, I guess. It's near the border of Victoria. So, yeah, but we are rural and my puppy's being annoying now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, oh, it's, 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 I think it's the second largest city to Adelaide when it comes to South Australian cities. So, um, okay. But it's beautiful down here, beautiful down here. And does your landscape, like where you live, does that come into your art, do you think? I think it does. I have done some beach scenes and beach landscapes and that's definitely influenced when we go down to the local beach areas. Um, I come home and then I just start painting beach landscapes. So it certainly does. And just we walk the dogs a lot in nature. We go for um, nature walks and, and yeah, I pick up things as I'm walking. I, I'm very visual, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I do. I, I pick up shapes and colors and I pick up the light and and then that comes out in my uh, botanicals and my florals as well so yeah. I do do a lot of florals yeah beautiful so um you oh, we can see some of them behind you these look oh, yes. like are these your current more like your current work are these your latest pieces yeah, this one here, that's the one I've, that's my most recent. Um, and that one is the bearded iris. And um, I've kind of only just discovered the bearded iris. Um, I was just flicking through one of my books because I use books as inspiration as well. And I came across this flower that just had the most beautiful shapes. And so I just started painting it. And yeah, I haven't stopped. So yeah, loving it. That's gorgeous. And this one here behind you as well, the same one that you're talking about. Hang on. You've got that. <laughs> Which one? Or this one? Yeah, the one with the pink background. Really, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big one. Um, I first started off doing a small version and then I thought let's give a big one a go because I don't usually do pink backgrounds. So mm. that's that's a new kind of development for me. Um and I guess it's a bit more realistic to mm -hmm. what I've done in the past. Uh, mm -hmm. They can be quite abstract. I guess it depends on my mood as well, um, on how abstract I go versus how realistic I go. I mean, I still wouldn't call that one, you know, really realistic, but, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a lot more, more. than some of them. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. say, you know, it's like a scale between totally abstract and then pure realism and it's just somewhere, somewhere in there <laughs> on that scale. Yeah, it is, it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah, like I say, it depends on my mood to to what I want and the flow that and the feel of the day. Sometimes I want to, I do paint quite fast, mm. so they can be a lot more abstracty. Um, mm. This one, I guess I had to spend a bit more time and detail in areas so that that was um, that was nice to be able to tr you know try more details. I and I'm still looking at it, going, does it need more details? I don't know. Does it need more depth? Do I need to add you know dark, a bit more darker tones to give it the depth, or do I leave it as is? So that's why it's sitting there. I haven't quite <laughs> decided. <laughs> that's usually what I tell uh, my members in my membership as well. Like if you haven't decided, give it some time and also give it some distance, you know, physically from you. Um, so, yes. you know, just walk past and go, oh, yeah, definitely need something. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it happens, doesn't it? Like the next day you'll come in with fresh eyes and then yes. you just go, aha, 
that's what, that's it, needs. what it needs. Yeah, or, yeah. It's not, almost like you have to um, lower the pressure on it and not think about it in order to come across you the do. Thing. Yeah, because sometimes you can overthink, can't you? Mm. If you stand there and mull over it for too long, your thoughts just go crazy and then, yeah, you're just at a loss as what to do. So stepping away is is the best thing. Yeah, I think we're all good at overthinking, aren't we? I think it's not <laughs> yes. the hardest thing because we're, like, sensitive humans. I think so. I just thought it was me. I, I've got this little, I call him a little man in my head um, to my partner. I just say, I've got this little man running around and he's like, I know. You know? <laughs> he's like, every morning you wake up and you're just like, blah, 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 you know, <laughs> and it's like, he just starts, he just starts running and running and running. And I'm just like, oh God. You know? oh. But I think, yeah, it's just our creativity just going crazy and, and it needs to come out. And then I come in the studio I start painting and the little man stops. He's quiet. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. so this is not an inner critic little man. This is a little man on a tread, treadmill, like on one of those little um, rat or mouse wheel things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's, oh, he's happy. He's running. He's happy, yeah. <laughs> but he needs oh, to get it all out. He's like, I've got this idea and I've got this idea and I've got this idea. Let's oh, go. yeah. <laughs> I hear you. And I think, you know, there's a lot of people that will be watching this as well that will be able to relate in the sense of having 5 million ideas because I think that is what it is to be a creative person. It's not it's not just that you like to paint or draw or whatever, make pretty things, but you're creative in terms of your ideas as well. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I've always been like that, you know, ever since I was a, a young child, I've just always had a pencil or a paintbrush in my hand. Mm. Um, it's just always felt natural and it, and it quietens me. Mm. It quietens everything. Mm. So it, it's something, it, maybe it's a necessity for mm. me personally to have that, uh, just to calm things down in, yeah. in this crazy, crazy world, crazy mind, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it's insane. That. <laughs> <laughs> now have you always been an artist because I know you've been at this for a long time so you were you're born creative you said you always had a paintbrush or a pencil in your hand and then in yeah. years have you always been an artist um no not really no because I I did go to uni um I studied art design teaching for a year and uh, then I swapped over just get the puppy dog off. <laughs> then I swapped over to visual communications, um, did that for four years. Mm-hmm. And then after uni, I just I just got a job, just any old job, uh, just to get money coming in. And it was nothing design related or art related. It was a mm-hmm. children's uh, play centre. Um, that's That was crazy. <laughs> yeah. But I just did that, saved up some money. And then a year later, I decided I just needed to, I needed to see the world. I needed to travel. You know, I just knew there was so much more out there to just, I was in Adelaide at that point, you know, just a, a small city. So I, I left and went to London and I was in London for seven years. So um, whilst in London, I did do graphic design work. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also ventured into the big corporate world and I did some investment banking. Um, that was very stressful, different, but I wanted to try it. I guess I just, I wanted to make sure that I ticked all the right boxes and, and realised, no, I don't want the corporate world. No, I don't want to work with children. No, you know what I mean? Like I, I sorted it all out and, yeah. And yeah, tr- I travelled a lot when I was overseas for the seven years. Mm-hmm. Um, London was my base, and then I just went crazy and just travelled. You know, I just yeah. I just saw everything. I just wanted to see everything. I wanted to take it in. I just yeah, and it really opens your eyes up to travel. Yeah, you know, and all the sights. Amazing. You know, I'm sure that influences your work, perhaps not directly, but just that appreciation of beauty and variety, and you know. I don't know, the richness, I suppose, of the world. Yeah, it does. It does. You know, I still have fond memories of so many places that I I did a lot of, I guess, trekking, camping, hiking. Mm. Uh, so I was outdoors quite a bit. You know, they were the most fun kind of mm. um, when I did 
go on a holiday or a tour or whatever I was doing at the time. Yeah, that were the fun ones when I was camping and I was out in the middle of nowhere, you know, in the Canadian Rockies or somewhere like that, you know, mm -hmm. and just just free in nature. They were my favourites and, and I guess they, they do come out in my artwork. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I can totally relate to the love of nature. I don't know, there's something just not shallow <laughs> like it sounds silly like I like nature but no actually there's <laughs> way <laughs> there's way more yeah. to it from my side of things and I'm sure from yours too it's more like this deep connection with um our our origin and you know the place that that houses us and allows us to live you know I think so too yeah it, it is an inner thing that you do feel when you're there I I well me personally I, I can't vouch for everyone but mm. it's just that overall calmness that comes over you mm. when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you just hear the birds you mm. the wind blowing the water trickling past you in the river it's it's everything just calms down yeah it's just beautiful I think for me I realized that um like I'm getting goosebumps um I realized that it's to, it's that feeling and it might be the wrong word but it's like it's almost the power of nature to hum humble us and to ground us and to make us yeah. see, um not in a negative way but that we're not important we are one teeny tiny like as an individual one teeny little tiny part of the history of you know this this place and the entire the life of this place I totally get that. Yeah, I, I can see that too. I feel that as well. It is a big world out there, you know, and we are this minute little object, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, which is probably why I did want to travel. and I, I needed to see that for myself mm. and experience mm. it. So, yeah, so absolutely loved my um, overseas. That was amazing. I uh, came home. I, I continued the investment banking when I came home in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. I lived there for a few years. Um, and then I realised I can't do corporate. I, mm -hmm. I I just needed my creativity to come back into my life a bit more than, than it was. And I needed the quiet life. I needed the country life. So my family were all in Mac Gambia. So mm -hmm. that's where I've ended up. <laughs> Beautiful. And then we will have a lot of people listening as well who um, – keen on making art but they have a day job and they want to do the art full-time how did you did you just go no nope, I'm not doing banking anymore I'm now a full-time artist or did you try to slowly transition how did you make that change over yeah well when I came home obviously I couldn't continue the banking and I didn't want to either mm -hmm. um so I just I got a job as a graphic designer at the local print store here that's um and I stayed there for quite a few years um, and I just slowly started coming home and just wanting to do more of my own creativity because it was all computer, it's all computer based, you know, graphic design is computer based and that's not me, <laughs> you know. I have all these um, thoughts in my head of what I want to produce and then I sit on a computer and I cannot do it. I just cannot do it, you know. It's, the whole it doesn't come out. Pro is it pro? Oh. Is that that's the name of it, isn't it? I just had a moment. It's called. Pro I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I think that's the latest one, isn't it? On the mm. iPad or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just I can't do it. No, yeah. it's mm. not for me. So, but yeah, I, I was uh, working in the print store, and then I just slowly cut my hours back as I I started um, just painting a bit more at home, and I first started doing markets here, the local markets, and I was just selling greeting cards and little. A4 prints and things like that um, and that really got me realizing this is the direction I need to be in this is what is making me happy so it's so it was a slow progression I guess of just asking for less and less hours at my workplace and they were really accommodating and I yeah very thankful that they would they put me into casual hours and so in the end I think I was only working maybe I don't know, I can't remember, not many hours a week. And then the rest of the time I was coming straight home and I was painting and I was just creating and and that's how I did it. It was it was a slow transition. I think probably probably started 2000, mid 2017, I started mm -hmm. the transition. And then by mid 2019, I was full-time artist. Okay. So, so two, two years. 
two-year transition because I think that is a topic and I, I mean I went through it as well myself um, but in I've been talking a lot lately about big magic and there's a part of it where Elizabeth Gilbert talks about keeping your day job for as long as you can so that you don't put that financial pressure on your um, on your art and it's she didn't she wasn't coming at it from the angle of art can't make money it's more about you know giving creativity room to be a natural beautiful entity and I also don't think she was saying to never give up your day job but just just that was her tip around the transition have you read that book no but I love reading things like that so yeah it's behind (laughs) yeah but yeah it's a it's a good book definitely worth a read um for sure all right yeah Yeah. I'll get that yeah I I love it I'm just interested in anything to do with things like that and just just being able to help yourself grow in your business. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's There's awesome. So much, <laughs> so much growth, isn't there, through art business? May, like maybe more so than a lot of other industries, I think, because it's so personal. I think so too. We really put our heart and soul on the line when we create and then suddenly we're showing it to the world. I mean, it, it is a scary thing to do, you know, what if your art's not accepted? What if no one likes it? We all have those thoughts all the time. But I guess as long as you're being true to yourself and producing what you want to create and you're not just doing it to to sell or you're not just doing it because that's the latest trend, I think mm. you really need to be true to yourself. And then it, it'll draw others in, you know, yeah. others that are on the right the same path as you you'll find that niche you'll find that connection with people so yeah it it is and and just don't give up just just keep pushing your artwork out there you know we all get rejections we'll get disheartened and have those moments of what am I doing but push through it you know the next day you you'll just create this amazing piece and just go wow I did that Yeah, that's exactly it. I think it's that um, persistence. And I think the persistence can only come when you have that alignment, which is what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, Just finding, finding your niche, what, what you enjoy. um, And don't worry about what others say or think. Mm. It'll all come together if you stay true. I had a message recently from um, a friend of mine who's also in the arts and she was talking about how she's getting a bit frustrated because she's not getting any any big opportunities for her art um, and for her art career. And she's been going at it for quite a while and she's just feeling like she's just not getting there. And do you, do you know what, what someone like that should do? Any, you know, tips for her? Um, do you mean like is she putting herself out there is she applying for things and then she's not is that what you mean yeah like she's applying for things and she's not become like being a finalist or a winner in certain things and she's not making enough money through her art even though her art is beautiful and she's doing all the social media and da, 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 but just yeah. not making that traction that she's wanting to it's hard it's really hard to get yourself out there I still feel like I struggled to get myself out there as well Mm. um, and to find the right market the right the right people Mm. for me you know Mm. Um, I mean yeah what sort of advice I'd say she's got to just keep being true showing her real self on her social media um, and you do you need to push yourself I just it's a bit scary. I've just got a YouTube channel, you know, and it's, only, it's only about a week old or something and it's I like, oh, actually, my God. I did notice. I'll put your link down below and all of that so other people can follow you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I've always said, oh, I've never even gone on YouTube, to be honest. I, um, and suddenly here I am doing videos of me painting and mm. um that's really out of my comfort zone a lot but I think she just needs to do things like that you know um just put herself out of her comfort zone yeah and I think part of that you know comes again back down to the joy and the passion and the love and the authenticity and all of that because you're sharing with the world what you love to do and you're 
sending out that message that this is what I do. This is how I paint. It might not be how you paint. It might not be the official technically correct way, um, but it doesn't matter because this is what I love doing and this is how I create my artwork. Okay. So come on the journey with me sort of thing. Yeah, yes. I think mm. she's just she's got to keep going. You know, we it's our journey and but just make sure that you're happy with the things that you're doing um probably don't overload yourself mm. on too many platforms and social media platforms those sorts of things because i did that at the start um and yeah it built a, a following i must mm. admit my instagram grew quite quickly mm. um but i would say it's were they the right following? Maybe not. I don't know because it's, I don't know if it's the algorithm at the moment or what it is, but it's, you know, I've got, I think, 54,000 followers, I think it is. But the thing is, I'm lucky if I get 100 likes, you know, yes. sometimes the yeah, within the first 24 hours. It's gone a bit bonkers. So, you know, at first I was just like, oh, really frustrated. And now I've just, I've just gone, you know what, I'm going to find something better if you're not going to help me out instagram i'm going to try elsewhere and try I have. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah and just move on and yeah i'm still using instagram still love it it is it, it is great for connection yeah um but yeah like i say i've got the youtube and i'm more on pinterest now i'm gonna give pinterest a bit more of a go yeah. All right. Beautiful. Well, I'll share all your links. Um, now, in terms of buying your art and looking at your art, you're, are you mainly on Blue Thumb or you must be in other places? Yeah, that was that was one of the things at the start. I just I was on way too many galleries ah, and, yes. and whatnot. Yeah. Yes, so, so I have called it back. <laughs> yeah. I've certainly called it back. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was mainly on blue thumb now i really uh that's the one i love uh, they've been really good to me and so i reciprocate you know i i give them um they market me i market them kind of thing uh, yeah these the like uh, i am on art lovers uh to be honest i don't think i've had a sale all year with them oh, so oh. yeah i did all right at the start when i first joined them quite a few years ago mm. um but it's really just yeah it hasn't it's it's one of the platforms i'm a bit iffy on now i'm like oh, do i stay with them i'm not sure you know because there's a lot of time involved in marketing each and every art gallery you're with yeah. each and every stockist you're with on top of that your own website you know it's it's a lot to try and market and keep everyone happy so i had to call back i was with um at one point i was with singular art uh, edit magazine um I'm still with Saatchi at the mm -hmm. moment, just for the overseas exposure. I'll keep that one for that. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't get that many sales from Saatchi, mm -hmm. but I'll stick with it. Um, the main one is Blue Thumb. Is this a case then... of you get like you get more from where you expend most of your energy? Because you're putting, yes. you're saying you put a lot of energy into your Blue Thumb stuff. Do you think? Like, I guess, is it a chicken and egg style thing? Are you getting more from them because you're putting more energy into it or you're getting more energy, sorry, you're putting more energy because you're getting more from them? <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. Um, any gallery you're with, I, I don't think you, you should leave it up to them mm. to market you and then get annoyed when they're only doing it every so often. They've yeah. got a lot of other artists they've got to deal with as well. You're not the only one there. I think you've got to, you've both got to give 50-50. Mm. So yes, I do market Blue Thumb a lot more than any other uh, platform I'm on and mm. they reciprocate. They give it back. So yeah, it you've got to have that love-love relationship with your galleries and don't expect them to do it all because just like everyone, they don't have the time either just to concentrate on one artist. They've got plenty of others too. Yeah. So, yes, for sure, that is a, a big one I would recommend for all other artists. You need you need to be putting in the effort as well. Yes, so, yes I, yeah. I know, I mean, there's Etsy, for example, as well. So a lot of creatives like to have their art on there. Um, but, again, like you're saying, with the blue thumb side of things and any sort of gallery or marketplace that has your art, you've got to push it, you've got to promote it. You know, there is you have responsibility. You do, you do. Um, that's why I've kind of niched it down, I guess, to mainly Blue Thumb. Mm. 
Mm. Every once in a while, I'll do Art Lovers and Saatchi, give them a plug, mm. um, but mainly Blue Thumb and my website. You've got to get the traction onto your own website. Mm. That's the key as well. And Just you do bring that them into primarily. yours. How do you do that primarily? Is that through your Instagram? How do you get your tra- traffic on your website? Hot tips, please. <laughs> Asking for yeah. a friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's hard work. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I spent so much, so many hours on the computer um, just marketing. But, yeah, look, um, it used to be Instagram. Of course, that's all changed, mm. as we know. Um, so now, like I say, I've got new, new avenues. Pinterest is apparently a really big one that we should all get onto. Uh, mm. Very underrated. And, it, yeah, it's a, it's a great search engine. Um, so I'm going down that road and obviously youtube just to show my face and try and get that connection i need that connection because i uh i know i need to do it but i just don't tend to show my face that often on instagram and i know i have to but i'm like oh i don't want to (laughs) you know um it's always scary (laughs) but yeah you have to connect and so i would say pinterest is my next big thing to try and get the customers or collectors onto my website is is where I'm headed right now. It's very early days, so I don't have any kind of stats or anything, but yeah. hopefully. I think Pinterest, yeah. So I don't do a lot of Pinterest. I do have a Pinterest channel. Page. <laughs> I don't know what it is, page maybe. Interesting. <laughs> Um, but I believe when I started, first started that and did all my research around it, I think it has like a three month um, cycle. So you do all your work at one point and then three months later, then you start to see traction. Like it's quite different. I think it's, it's the opposite to Instagram. Instagram, we all get the immediate likes, comments, likes, comments. Um, but yeah, Pinterest is like a slow, slower burn, which is good. And it lasts for longer as well. Whereas obviously anything you post on Instagram just goes up and then it's gone, you know, (laughs) and then it's gone. You've probably got that probably 24 hour, um, hit on Instagram, Mm. don't you? And like you say, yeah, Pinterest is a a longer term. Um, I've been listening to a few podcasts just on marketing on Pinterest and Mm. things like that. And, yeah, and that's what I've been hearing. And I'm like, oh, my God, why didn't I do this years ago? Yes. You know, because I probably would have had the traction by now, you know, a lot yeah. more traction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got to start somewhere. Totally. Yeah. And you don't you don't know what you don't know, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's all that's learning. Funny. It's all learning. And, <laughs> yeah. So we'll see how it goes. I'll let you know. <laughs> Amber, I'm looking at my notes here. That's what I keep on looking down at. Okay. <laughs> I want to ask you a whole more questions. What do I have? I said... I have here. Your style is really consistent. When did you know you found your style and how did you know that you'd found it? And that this is always, this is an interesting one for me because I get this question from other people a lot about how to find my style. And I tend to say it's not a destination. It's a moving target. But curious what you think about this. I do believe um, it's always going to develop. It's, it's. Um, I don't think we'll ever stay the same because we are creative and yeah, our little brains just keep working and working and uh, coming up with new ideas. So it's it will. Man on yeah, the little man is, <laughs> it's running. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think. Oh, I think it was just around the start of 2017 when I started really picking up that paintbrush again. Mm. Um, to be honest, I was doing a. I was just splashing on the canvas. I didn't have anything in mind. I just chose some colours and I just started splashing uh, and they were just abstract. They were just abstract colours. I've got actually one in my bedroom still, um, this blue one. I don't know what it was, whether it was a landscape, what it was, um, but I just kept playing every day. And then one day I, um, I just brought flowers into it mm. and flowers were never something I'd ever thought was that I'd be interested in painting. I I don't know why, but probably from the age of like 13 onwards, I always thought flowers were a boring subject matter for an artist. I can't play, paint flowers, you know. <laughs> and now that's all I do for a living. It's like how things turn around. Yeah. Um, but I, I just started putting some little flowers on this abstract D background and 
I just remember standing back and just going, wow. Mm. And, that, and that was that moment where I just knew I'd found something. There was something mm. in this and I can do it. It yeah. was that moment. And that painting is, is hanging in my bedroom and I will not let go of that painting. Oh. I've got a, um, an art collector who actually wants it. Mm. and she can pay me five million dollars mm. i will not give that painting up because That's it is basic. so it's just so connected to me it was that moment that instant where i just went this is it yeah and so i just kind of went from there yeah and flowers were my thing after after me telling my head for the last 20 <laughs> years flowers are boring it's like, nope, scrap that. Let's start again. Flowers are awesome. <laughs> it's an interesting concept, isn't it? I know another artist on some podcast somewhere said that they used to hate the colour purple, whatever colour it was, hated it as a young kid with a passion and anyone who wore purple, da 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 da, da. And then <laughs> now as an adult artist, she paints with purple all the time and she loves it. And she's just realised, actually, you know, there was something in that. The fact that I hated it so much, I wonder why, where did that come from? Was it just immaturity, maybe? Um, was it just, what was it, black and white thinking, maybe? And now she's just sort of come <laughs> sort of full circle. So it sounds like you've done the same sort of thing. Yeah, I think mm. so. Yeah. And to be honest, because it was so ingrained in my head for so many years, mm. sometimes I still struggle with it, you know. I'll, I'll be honest and I'll, I'll stand there and go, why am I painting flowers? I don't want to paint flowers. But then I go, but they're so pretty. I love them. I love the <laughs> shapes. I love the colours. Yeah. I want to paint flowers. I have this ongoing struggle sometimes, you know, mm. where it still wants to creep back in there and tell me, no, you can't paint that. <laughs> <laughs> but I always override it. It's like, no, I'm doing this. I'm no. doing it my way. <laughs> and you can do it your yeah your way, you know, because you're the artist, so you can paint any yeah. of any sort of anything. You're you're in control. That's it. We can just create whatever we feel like, and I just love that flexibility of being an artist and just having that freedom. Yeah, it's it's yeah, I love it. Well, this sounds like a really good point to end our chat. Um, <laughs> I will make sure that I share all of your links below. Um, the best place for people to get in contact with you, would you say it's still Instagram? Yeah, look, you can DM me at Instagram um, or hop on my website. Um, you can email me off via my website. Um, but, yeah, Instagram's still fine. Yeah, that's fine. Check out the YouTube channel. Yes. <laughs> Watch me paint. <laughs> That's so exciting. I have seen your, you know, little posts about it, but I haven't hopped on over. I've been very busy lately, but I need to go and need to go and have a snoop. Yes, have a little sneak peek at, at me painting. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, Amber. We'll chat soon. All right. Okay. Thank you, Rose. Bye. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye. <laughs>